Hello. My last video, video 158, was kind of a long and very complicated video where we did a lot of complicated things. And I was looking for a shorter problem involving the one of the concepts that we introduced in that last video, the idea of modified duration. And in Broverman's book, I couldn't really find a real short problem related to it. So I decided to look for an actuarial sample exam from 2017 to see if there were any problems that were maybe relatively short about modified duration. And I did find one. It's problem number 124. The goal is to find the modified duration of a perpetuity due when the Macaulay duration is given. Pretty short problem statement here. And the initial feeling you might have is because it's so short, we're not given much, given much information, it might be difficult to solve, but it's not too hard to solve. Rhonda purchases a perpetuity, providing a payment of one at the beginning of each year, forever, perpetuities are forever. This is at the beginning of each year, so it's a perpetuity due. The perpetuity's Macaulay duration is 30 years. We want to calculate the modified duration of this perpetuity. Okay, so um, short problem, not much information. It might give you the feeling that it could be difficult because of that, but you just gotta, you know, you just have to jump in and, and see what happens. So let's go ahead and recall the definition of modified duration from video 154, 158. The modified duration, d mod, which in general does depend on i, is the Macaulay duration, d mac, which also depends on i in general, divided by 1 plus i, where i is going to be the effective annual interest rate here. And we are given that d mac is 30. So if we can figure out i, then we've solved the problem. So it seems pretty short, but how in the world are we going to figure out i? We're only told that this, this perpetuity uh, due has a Macaulay duration of 30 years. Can we figure out I from that? The answer is yes. Um, and you need to go back to the definition of Macaulay duration. I've written it in previous videos involving summations, but let's just go ahead and think about a number line here. Here's our timeline. These payments of one starting at time zero go on forever. And we know, well, the Macaulay duration is a ratio where the bottom of the ratio is definitely the present value of this series of payments. It's what it's worth. You could represent that as a double dot sub infinity. A double dot because it's a, um, an annuity due. The payments start right away at time zero at the unspecified interest rate i. But what about the numerator? Recall that in the numerator you have a sum where the payment gets multiplied by the time of payment and also discounted back to time zero. So take the payment of payments of one, discount it back to time zero, and multiply those present values by the times of payments. The first one though is a time of payment of zero, so we can ignore it. Uh, the other terms are going to have, well, one for payment of time, a payment of one at time one is going to give us a value of one times the present value of that, which would be one times v. Then a payment of one at time two is going to give us, when we multiply times the time of payment, two times the present value of that payment at time zero, which would be v squared. Then plus three v cubed, etc. And you reckon, should recognize that that is your basic uh, present value of a basic annuity immediate, increasing annuity immediate, i a infinity divided by a double dot infinity is what we get here. Now you may have the formulas for these things memorized. And that, that's great if you do. If you don't, um, well, maybe you have the formulas for a double dot n and i a n memorized, and then you could just use those formulas and let n go to infinity. Uh, for a n double dot, the formula is 1 minus v to the n over d, where d is the discount rate, of course, related to i, the interest rate. And as n goes to infinity, since v is going to be between 0 and 1, this is going to approach 1 over d as n goes to infinity. And that will then be the value of a double dot infinity. What about ia, which really that's the present value of a basic annuity immediate, because again, the 0 times 1 went away in the numerator. Um, the formula for this one, if I use an n, you, I hope, remember is a double dot n i minus n v to the n over i. Okay, maybe you remember that, maybe you don't. 
let n go to infinity in that one, a n uh, double dot, as it does up here, is going to approach 1 over d. And this thing is going to approach 0. That's not completely obvious. Technically, we take L'Hopital's rule to verify that. But it's true. You essentially have an exponential decay to 0 times a linear growth function of n. Uh, it's going to go to 0 as n goes to infinity. And the bottom's constant, it's i, and this simplifies to 1 over i times d. Now we can just plug these things in, and fortunately, the d's cancel. This becomes 1 over i times d divided by 1 over d. The d's cancel. This simplifies right away to 1 over i. And therefore, 30 is 1 over i. Therefore, i is 1 over 30, uh, which would be 0 0.03 repeating. And now you can finish the problem. The modified duration uh, is going to be, well, I guess I could plug in the i equals 1 30th here, but I'll go ahead and just calculate it. Uh, 30 divided by 1.03 with 3 repeating. Use your calculator now. 30 divided by 1.03333 gives you about 29.03. And that is the correct answer. That happens to be choice C on the sample exam from 2017. We are again doing problem number 124 here. So you definitely can solve this problem, even though it feels like at first that you can't.